Hello, uh, good evening. This is the uh, slightly delayed 8 p.m. from Wayside Avenue. Um, we're <laughs> we, Bill has passed the baton on to me, so apologies you're not seeing Bill. And um, we had a few technical issues, so I am going to do the, um, the introduction to the hour of prayer uh, slightly later than, than scheduled for this evening. But I'm going to be reading Bill's transcript, reading Bill's notes, uh, which, are, which are great. So hopefully I can do it some kind of justice. Uh, sorry, it's been a little bit. Um, uh, anyway, so Bill has chosen as his theme. Remember, we're, we're in the this time of looking at testimony in these twenty-one days, and Bill has chosen um, a man called Henri Nguyen, uh, and he's titled it Henri Nguyen, Fool for God, a Fool for God question mark. So I'm going to read it as if I was Bill. So just um, bear with me. So last May, Margaret and I went on a sort of pilgrimage. No penance was involved, rather it was pretty much four and five star throughout. Our Baltic cruise was set around a visit to the Hermitage Museum in St. Petersburg, where I, maybe more than Margaret, was keen to see Rembrandt's original painting, The Return of the Prodigal. I'd recently read Henri Nguyen's book of this title, uh, which Sarah Maxwell Wood had suggested to me. And a little bit about uh, Nguyen. He was born in the Netherlands in 1932 and died there from a sudden heart attack at the age of 64. So he's younger than Bill. <laughs> what is my legacy is a question which arises. Uh, and Nguyen was a Catholic priest. He was a professor. He was a writer and a theologian. But after two decades of, of top-flight work, when he'd written uh, 39 books, selling over 7 million copies, he became a pastor to a community of adults with intellectual and developmental difficulties in Ontario, in Canada, part of the L'Arche uh, community. L'Arche just means the Ark in French. So whilst he died in, in, in the Netherlands, he was buried in St. John's Cemetery, Ontario, near to many of those he'd cared for and where he found his true heart and service. His journey from authority, so he was a man of some international renown, to frontline, dirty-handed service really commenced in front of that Rembrandt canvas. Uh, and with special permission from curatorial staff, he sat in front of it for over two whole days. Margaret and I grasped just 20 minutes or so and then had to move along, ushered by some rather sombre Russian staff. Take a look at Rembrandt's picture. It can be viewed on the internet. It's quite dark in overall colouring, but you see very clearly the prodigal son on his knees before the father with the older brother looking on. There are two other shadowy figures also and much speculation continues among artists and theologians as to who these two might be. But Nuon's gaze was fixed upon the son, the brother and the father sitting with them and over many hours his mind placed him as each one of these three characters in turn. What he saw in them takes a small book to describe. Incredibly, and to Nguyen's great surprise, he would even see himself as the father, the God figure. And this realisation was life-changing for him. At this point, he threw over his previous occupations, his international recognition and renown, to take the humble position of a pastor to mentally ill, or sorry, mentally handicapped adults. And it was here that he found his true self and rich fulfilment. Was he a fool for God? No, he was God for them, full of mercy and grace. So tonight, might we stand before God afresh and see whether we are serving exactly as he would want us? Let's see. Should we surrender public or other recognition as part of the price of changing gear, moving our situation, placing our hands on new things for him? In his recent book, The Way of Blessing, Roy Godwin 
uh, current leader of the Faldi Brennan Christian community in Wales, refers to the Old Testament character Caleb, writing, I love his heart, his courage, his trust, his different spirit. God himself testifies and says that Caleb followed him wholeheartedly. So maybe over these 21 days, we, like Nguyen from the 20th century and Roy Godwin today, will, through contemplation, be able to explore the very nature of blessing, of mission, and the presence of God. Like Nguyen, maybe we just need to sit and gaze upon the Father so that our lives and the lives of others might be transformed. Maybe we just need to sit and gaze upon the Father so that our lives and the lives of others might be transformed. So, could, I, could Bill suggest two possible themes for our prayers this evening, building on that foundation, flowing out of that? So, two themes. Number one, key workers. Key workers. Particularly those from our own church family, from MCC, on the front line just now. Uh, so things like healthcare, policing, education, and, and other areas, food delivery, food distribution, all those frontline areas, key workers, and particularly at the hospital, uh, Harrogate Hospital. Um, so that's the first thing, key workers. And number two, uh, your corner of service, your corner of service in God's vineyard. And for this, and to close, I quote Roy uh, Godwin and his consideration of Caleb of old. Um, so let me just move on to, uh, let me just find these Caleb questions one second. Um, just hang on a second, give us me just a second. Okay, just bear. Bear with me while I find these questions. Um, where the heck are we? We're all having technical difficulties tonight, Bill. It's fine. Okay. So these are the five Caleb questions. Okay. So the first one, who or what is God putting in front of you that you can affirm and bless? Who or what is God putting in front of you that you can affirm and bless? Who is God putting in front of you to whom you can show mercy? Who is God putting in front of you to whom you can show mercy? Uh, who is God putting in front of you with whom you can share the gospel of the kingdom? So blessing, mercy, gospel sharing. And then what opportunity is God opening up for us, MCC, as a group, to declare the good news of the kingdom in our area? And who could I invite to come and, and join us? So they are these five uh, Caleb questions uh, that Bill suggests we, we consider. So the first area is key workers. And then the second thing is about our service in God's vineyard, and we're encouraged to consider those five prompts, those five Caleb questions. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to close in prayer now. I'm going to read some uh, scripture Bill suggested I read as we move into a time of prayer. And then I will say good night, goodbye, and what's left of the rest of the hour. You've got a good 40 minutes. Please do uh, use that to pray in particularly. Maybe consider those, those promptings, those... Um, challenges and encouragements from Bill uh, this evening. So let me just read uh, a few verses of scripture from the very end of Matthew chapter 16. When Jesus told his disciples, if anyone would come after me, let him deny himself, take up his cross and follow me. For whoever would save his life will lose it. But whoever loses his life for my sake will find it. For what will it profit a man if he gains the whole world and forfeits his soul? What shall a man give in his return for his soul? 
For the Son of Man is going to come with his angels in the glory of his Father, and then he will repay each person according to what he has done. Truly I say to you, there are some standing here who will not taste death until they see the Son of Man coming in his kingdom. Let's pray. God, our Father, we thank you for uh, the example of Henri Nguyen, a man of incredible gifting, incredible uh, wisdom, incredible insights, a great gift to the church, Lord. We thank you for the direction that this man's life took in terms of humble service, in terms of coming alongside those who maybe many in the world overlooked, and yet finding in that uh, ministry, in that mission field, a source of rich blessing for himself and for others. And Father, as we dwell on those questions about what God might be calling us to do at this time, whom to bless, whom to show mercy to, whom to share the gospel with, Lord, I pray that you would encourage us all, speak to us all, um, guide and direct us as how we can redeem these times, redeem these times of lockdown, of restricted mobility, to pray, to speak, to bear witness. And Father, finally, we do lift up especially our key workers. We think of those on the front line, Lord, there are many at MCC, um, reminded of those today who are working in, in hospitals, um, dealing with patients who have coronavirus, Lord. So protect them, particularly protect their families, bless and strengthen all uh, at the front line and give them your peace, we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay. I'll sign off. Thank you, Bill, for those wonderful uh, notes and that wonderful introduction. Enjoy the rest of your hour of prayer. Goodbye.